MSP430 is a Texas Instruments mixed signal processor. MSP is a series of controllers. It's a broad family ranging from 1 kilobytes of read-only memory to 60 kilobytes of read-only memory on chip. And the RAM space is 128 bytes to 10 kilobytes of RAM which is good enough for medium range signal processing applications. So that is the reason why they named as a mixed signal processor. Even since most of the microcontrollers are 8 bit uh, and uh, they doesn't have huge amount of RAM space, mostly they have 256 bytes or 1 kilobytes. However, TI's MSP is a 16 bit controller, RISC architecture and good amount of flash as well as RAM space is there which is reasonably good for signal processing applications. The three subfamilies are there. One is called MSP430 1XX which is a basic. Three is having more advanced features and four series has a built-in LCD driver. So while buying you need to look for not only MSP430 and its suffix. The suffix meaning uh, is after MSP430, the first one talks about the memory type. That is, you want to have a inbuilt ROM, flash, one-time programmable or APROM. You need to specify MSP430. For example, usually we buy MSP430F. That is because we want to have a flash MSP430. Similarly, the other two digits, FA, FB, that is about the uh, functional units which are inbuilt. Whether you want basic unit or you want to have a hardware multipliers or LCD controllers and so on. So th the basic functions are optional. You have to choose based on your application. And the last uh, suffix is about the amount of memory capacity. For example, if you want, uh, let us say, 48 kilobytes of memory then MSP 430 F148 so the last digits will talk about the amount of flash memory and then of course plus the RAM space so this is the various numbering convention followed by Texas MSP 430 controllers so this is I mean you can see the roadmap of MSP they are available in 31 series which is a uh, having a N LCD driver inbuilt. 1X is a base model where there is no inbuilt LCD driver, but however, it is rich in peripherals. And then this 5 series goes up to 30 million instructions per second and huge amount of flash and uh, RAM space. So based on your application, one can choose the corresponding MSP430 series controller. There are number of applications which are majorly you can look for medium signal processing applications like data loggers or temperature measurement systems, weighing scales or biomedical applications where most of the cases what you can see is these are all battery operated systems. So you can refer the MSP data sheets, application notes on the Texas Instrument website ti.com MSP430 uses one Newman architecture and that means whether you interface the program memory or you interface the data memory in both the cases the buses are common so that is there is only one address bus and one data bus for interfacing the flash RAM and peripherals. So being a risk controller you will have rich registers and another unique feature is though it is a low cost controller but and medium signal processor but still it has a inbuilt JTAG emulator for testing and debugging purpose. 
if you look at the data sheet of MSP430 controller, uh, we refer, let us say, 1.6 series of MSP430 as we use in the labs. So it operates from 1.8 volts to 3.6 volts, anywhere you can operate this device. Now if you see the power consumption modes in active mode when you are operating at 1 megahertz, it consumes around 330 micro amperes for 2.2 volts power supply. Or else in standby mode or off mode as you can see with RAM retention 0.2 micro amperes which is very very less as compared to many of the microcontrollers. And the power saving modes are important because this is majorly meant for like a wireless sensor networks. So we can uh, program through software, you can program it for less power consumption. Since it is a 16-bit risk controller and uh, it can instruction cycle time is 125 nanoseconds. So it has inbuilt DMA controller with three channels. 12-bit A2D converter is uh, good enough for most of the low-end signal processing applications with sample and hold, auto scan features. And then very rarely microcontrollers have DTA converter. MSP430168 has an inbuilt 12-bit DTA converter. There are 16-bit timers, timer A and timer B with various modes of operation like capture, compare and so on. Two serial ports are there, USCRT0, USRT1, plus it also has a serial peripheral interface and I2C inbuilt inside the chip. The other good feature of this controller is there is a bootstrap loader, which is one of the unique feature of MSP430, where without having a JTAG emulator, you still you can debug your programs. MSP430 is a family of various controllers as you can see the amount of flash amount of RAM is different for different range of controllers for example MSP430 168 has 48 kilobytes of flash memory and 2 kilobytes of RAM space the packages is a 64 pin package and different packages are available usually we use quad flat pack which has uh, pins on four sides so this is the package where as you can see the pin number the one where you can see the dot or the this notch will be there by the identifying the controller These are the family of MSP430. So about MSP430-168, now if you see the features of MSP430-16 series, first of all the oscillator. One should carefully look at the oscillator of MSP430 because as you can see, X in X out is one clock source, X2 in X2 out is other clock source, our oscillator is in the third one, there is a feedback. And then if you see the clocks, there is a uh, auxiliary clock, there is a SM clock, there is a master clock. So there are three clock sources from here itself. So there is a possibility of choosing your own clock based on your operation mode. Then it has registers, 16-bit registers are there, 16 registers are there. And hardware multiplier, which is a, again a unique feature, where hardware multiplier means it will take only one machine cycle to complete the complete multiplication. So that is called hardwide multiplier. There is a JTAG emulator is there, where uh, the standard pins like TDO, TDI, TMS, T TCK are meant for testing and debugging the controller and if you look at the memory based on the family you have selected the flash is available from 32k to 60 kilobytes of flash memory again ram is available up to 2 kilobytes of ram and as you can see it's very good rich in peripherals 
the peripherals are like adc which is a 12 bit 8 channels the conversion time is less than 10 microseconds there is a 12 bit dac 2 channels which is a voltage output 12 bit dac is available and then dma controller watchdog timers timer a timer b so all of them are connected to 16 bit data bus and the io ports controllers are usually meant known for input output lines so this controller has six io ports so six into eight is the number of io lines are available for interfacing various input output devices like leds lcd switches sensors and so on and similarly the other peripherals like serial communication uscrt0 uscrt1 and spi i2c comparator so these are all connected to 8 bit data bus and the operating supply of this dvcc is we usually operate at 3.3 volts supply and there is a reset pin which is a active low signal as you can see from the pin functions most of the pins have multiple functions which is mentioned with a forward slash the a to d converter is there on port 6 so port 6 has act as a io port but it also act as a a0 to a7 which is a a to d converters 8 channels However, the last two six, that is port 6.6 .6 and 6.7, also act as a D to A converter. So DAC0, DAC1 is available on 6.6 .6 and 6.7. If you look at the registers of MSP430 controller, MSP430 has 16 registers, 16 bit register, which is rich in registers. However, you cannot use the first four registers because they have some other function. Like R0 also majorly it used for as a program counter. Then R1 act as a stack pointer. Then R2 also used as a status register or constant generator where you can have some constants, preloaded pre constants or status uh, act as a flag register which is very important register then r3 is again as a general purpose register or a constant generator so first uh, these four registers have multiple functions however r4 to r15 are general purpose registers which can be used in the program for storing the data temporarily the addressing modes are all the addressing modes as listed here like register indexed relative absolute indirect indirect auto increment and immediate operation as can be seen from the table the syntax is the first is mnemonic is the source and second is the destination like in case of a register the contents of if you say move r10 comma r11 that means contents of r10 is loaded in r11 register and so on similarly you can have a index value specified as a part of the instruction so the resultant address that is r5 plus 2 so whatever is that memory indicates from the contents of that memory location will be transferred to the destination memory location address whose address is specified by r6 plus index value so these are the uh, indexed addressing in absolute you can specify the some labels with a uh, ampersand symbol so that contents of the memory location whose address is specified by this label will be transferred to the memory location whose address is specified by this label similarly in indirect addressing mode you can have the address in a register so at the rate when you are saying that means that register will have the address of the memory location and indirect with auto increment means you can also specify plus so that it will automatically increment by 2 so that it will load in the other register for storing the or moving the data immediate is hash symbol if you specify the hash symbol 
then the value is loaded into the register or to the memory location because it is a data is part of the instruction there are six operating modes for msp430 controller so if you carefully look at the modes of operation they are nothing but operating the clock sources say for example in active mode all clocks are active but however if you see other modes low power modes lpm modes in lpm 0 cpu is disabled is is because auxiliary clock and sm clock remain active however master clock is disabled so that means peripherals are active but cpu is disabled similarly in lpm 1 cpu is disabled now as you can see the mc clock is disabled and at the same time dco that is the internal clock source generator dc generator disabled similarly lpm 2 lpm 3 lpm 4 so these six modes are having option of choosing at a given point of time which clock source to be active and so that and de disable the other clock sources so that you can save the power so in short that is the meaning of uh, operating modes of msp430 to make it low power modes the interrupts of msp430 the unique feature of msp430 interrupts is other than the peripherals interrupts the microcontroller has io port 1 io port 2 which act as the interrupt sources as you can see entire port 2 is using interrupts and entire port 1 also act as a interrupts io pins if you see the interrupt vector table which is starting from ff e0 to FFFFE is the address that is FFFFF is the address of the interrupt vector table of MSP430 controller that is the last available address range of the 16 bit address space and the priorities is the last location is meant for external reset so there is a reset pin on the microcontroller which is active low signal so whenever it is received then it will make a jump to FFFFE memory location so this is the highest priority of the among the interrupt resources similarly the timers comparators and A to D converters serial ports DMA controller they have interrupt sources including D to A converter. The lowest priority is for the D to A converter where the address is starting FFFF E0. So the though port 1 and port 2 has interrupts but there is a register which can be used to mask the interrupts whenever you want to disable the interrupt except the reset which is no non-maskable and NMI if you look at the memory mapping of the MSP430 controller MSP430 F14 168 series controllers the 168 has 48 kilobytes of memory which is flash starting from 04000 to FFFF is the address of the flash memory so interrupt vector is again a flash starting from FFFF E0 to FFFF and the code memory program memory starting from 04000 to FFFFF and the other memory which is a flash and ROM space is there 256 bytes and 1 kilobytes which is available from 01000 to 010FF and 0C002FFFF 
and the RAM space where you can store the dynamic variables that is available 2 kilobytes of memory space from 0 to 00, 00 to 09 FF which also can be used as a stack space. The peripherals, there are 16-bit peripherals, there are 8-bit peripherals and SFRs where the starting from 000 to 01 FF is reserved for the peripherals of the microcontroller. If you look carefully look at the I.O. pins, specifically like port 1 and port 2, they have interrupt as a resource. So they also have a simple input-output line, but they also act as a interrupt pins. Say for example, if you see every pin has multiple functions, either it can act as a simple input-output line or also like in this case port 1, it also like a module X or some other like uh, serial ports, timers and so on. So multiple functions will be there. So based on the P1 select register, so this register will decide whether this pin is a IO pin or this pin is a special function pin. And the direction pin will decide whether the direction of the data. So see whenever the direction bit is set, as you can see the tri-state buffer, this pin will decide whether the data direction is a output port or the data direction is a input port. So that is the direction. Then there is a out register where whatever you write the data into this register as you can see, the data is available at the output pin. And similarly if you want to read the data, then whatever your data you are reading as you can see complemented uh, uh, state of the direction is connected to this tri-state buffer. So now whatever is the data is available in at the input that is available at the in pin register. So now basically we have four registers. The select register will decide the functionality of the port whether it is a simple input output or whether it is a special function we are using. The direction register will decide whether the data is flowing from the controller to the outside world or the data is coming from the outside world to the inside the controller. And third is P1 out register. Whatever you write the data into this register, the data available at the output pin. And P1 in register, whatever is the data available on the port pin, you can read the data. Similarly, we also has a provision for using this in the input mode, specifically only for input mode. You can also use as an interrupt resource that means whenever there is a change in state is there then first of all you can choose the sensitivity of that pin whether edge triggered or a level triggered so sensitivity you can decide after that whenever a interrupt is received interrupt flag will be set and interrupt request will be generated so a isr will be executed whenever a interrupt is sensed so it is a int vectored interrupt location so that is one unique feature of MS-P430 microcontroller. The I.O. pins, specifically port 1 and port 2, they are not only uh, input-output lines, but you can also use as a interrupt resources. That means 8 into 2, 16 interrupts, hardware interrupts, are there in MS-P430 microcontroller. One of the most important feature of MSP430 is about its internal clock generator. As you can see from the figure where the clock sources, there are two clock sources, one is X in, other is X2 in, where you can, by through control register, you can selectively make them on and off, oscillator off or X2 oscillator off. So these clock sources, that is X and in, where the output of this oscillator act as a auxiliary clock, and with the help of this uh, 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 control register, you can choose the dividing factor so that auxiliary clock can be a programmable. Similarly, X2 in the another crystal oscillator, must main system clock oscillator source, you can uh, externally interface, and that again can be multiplexer is selectable 
are divisible and finally the main system clock oscillator uh, is can be uh, like cpu can be make on and off so this is in the power saving mode so this is the one which is making the cpu on and off with the help of the status register so the select pins can choose which is the clock source for the master clock one the it can it can be a auxiliary clock as can be seen from this or it can be a, a, a xt xt2 as a clock source or it can be a internal oscillator as you can see there is a dc generator where the there is a uh, rc you can externally connect a resistor to this circuit which can generate clock internally without uh, having any external clock source and again can be divisible which act as a subsystem clock source that means now even this clock also can be selected which act as a main system clock for the cpu so in short a cpu can operate either on main clock or a low frequency crystal fx xt1 or a internal clock oscillator which is generated by rc components so whenever you reset the microcontroller the first thing one has to choose is choose the oscillator for the main system clock and similarly for the peripherals you can choose your auxiliary clock and the dividing factor so that the the uh, various uh, devices are operating on various clock sources at any given point of time so in conclusion the msp430 has 27 instructions which is a risk architecture and seven addressing mode it uses orthogonal architecture it means that every instruction can use every addressing mode that is the flexibility of orthogonal architecture then it has rich in uh, registers 16 registers are there including program counter status register and stack pointer most of them are single cycle operations and the buses are 16 bit registers are 16 bit and then it has inbuilt constant generator so that immediate values can be read from those constant generator which will reduce your code size direct memory access is inbuilt then word and byte addressing are available in the instruction format itself so as we have discussed that there are registers of 16 registers so your arithmetic and logic unit is 16 bit however the first four registers are also having other purpose like program counter stack pointer status register and constant generator if you look at the status register the status register though 16 bit but out of that actually the lsb is used first is the carry bit zero bit these are the flags negative global interrupt and as you can see in the dotted portion which indicate the operating mode of the msp430 like you can see you can switch off the cpu by setting the cpu off oscillator can be off by setting this clock and as SC0, SCG1, these are the bits which will select the clock source and V is the overflow bit. So the registers like program counter can be programmed by using instructions like move and hash will indicate the value. So directly program counter will make a branch to the memory location whose address is specified by this or the address is branched to the address contained in the label or you can specify a uh, indirect addressing mode where the address is there in r14 register so at the rate r14 the contents will be branched specified by r14 register similarly the stack pointer stack pointer as you can see the instructions where the move two comma sp to r6 that means load the contents of the r6 register whose address is specified by stack pointer plus two locations or move r7 comma zero comma sp that means overwrite the top of the stack with the contents of the r7 you can also use the push and pop operations so that it will 
push the contents of this on top of the stack and or pop the contents from the top of the stack into R8 register. So stack pointer is operation, stack pointer is taken care by R1 register which is uh, decrement, pre-decrement and post-increment scheme. Status register which is R2 register as we have discussed that this is carry flag, zero flag, negative, global interrupt, CPU on and off, oscillator on and off, then the clock source and the power flow. So as discussed, the SSSC0, SCG1, system clock generator. So if this bit is 1, turns off the SM clock and if this bit is 0, when set, when this bit when set turns off the DCO, DC generator. So that is how you can choose which one, which clock generator you want to make it on and off. Similarly, oscillator off. So this bit when set turns off the low frequency crystal oscillator. And if this CPU off flag, this bit is set, turns off the CPU itself. And all the interrupts which are having a global interrupt, so this bit has to be set if you want to accept any one of the peripherals uh, interrupt source which are all maskable interrupts. And uh, traditionally we have used in every controller like carry flag, zero flag, negative and overflow flag. Based on your arithmetic and logical operations, these flags will be set or clear. And constant generator registers like R2 and R3 can hold the constant values like 4, 8, 0, 1, 2 or FFFF based on the application. So there are some emulated instructions generally used uh, by some assemblers so that though actual instructions are 27 but these 24 emulated instructions are equivalent to the existing basic instructions. So even if you execute emulated instructions in, in turn they will be converted into basic instructions by using the assembler. Say for example you, uh, you can look at the 27 instructions here you have a add instruction. So when you say add instruction, if you don't specify in bracket, then that means add ins operation is a 16 bit. But if you specify in bracket dot b, that means you want to implement a byte by byte arithmetic operation. Similarly, you can see big instruction, that is bit clear, bis, that is bit set. So instead of using big and bis, you can use the emulator instructions. So emulator instruction means like you can say clear the carry, set the carry. So that means those instructions are converted into this big and bis instruction. So these are that is the meaning of emulated instructions. Emulated instruction means user friendly instructions which, which the user can write the instructions but the assembler in turn will convert them into its equivalent form of the microcontrollers instruction set. So in summary about the memory model of uh, MSP430 controller, as you can see the total addressing capacity of MSP430 is 16 bits, so 2 raised to 16, 64 kilobytes of continuous memory mapping. Same memory is used either for the data or for the peripherals. And programming the flash or RAM, there is no restrictions as you can see from the memory map. The your uh, starting from 0, 0, 0 to 1 FFF is for your peripheral SFRs, then the RAM is starting from 0 to 0, 0 location. Bootstrap loader, which is the program meant for loading the application programs from the outside world like personal computers into the flash memory of the controller is taken care by the bootstrap loader. And then there is a flash memory and from 04000 uh, location on uh, uh, sorry 4000 location onwards to FFFF is the flash memory. So the last uh, uh, table is meant for interrupt vector table. So this is how the memory mapping and IO mapping of the microcontroller of MSP works. It doesn't differentiate between the memory space and I/O space. Everything comes under the memory space. 
in the memory organization as we have discussed if you see the address the starting location from 002 ff is meant for 8 bit peripherals and sfrs and 16 bit peripherals which are starting from 100 to 200 memory location while accessing byte by byte as you can see the even address uh, lower byte will be there or address the higher byte will be there from the 8 bit memory locations so you can fetch the data 16 bit at a time but however from the memory it the lsb and msp is stored in different locations so before we uh, go for the tools which are meant for writing the programs of msp430 microcontroller first beginning of any program is selection of the oscillator so the master oscillator main system oscillator which is meant for the cpu one has to choose first so that oscillator either it must be coming from the low frequency crystal oscillator as can be seen 32.768 kilohertz act as a auxiliary clock or a peripheral clock so this can be a clock source or the internal oscillator which is a dco digitally controlled oscillator can be used as a clock source for your master clock or main system clock and peripheral subsystem clock also can be done with the help of the dco so this master clock however can be can be from x t two crystal which is a high frequency crystal so 8 megahertz in msp 43168 you can connect it so the first instruction of every any program is selection of a clock source so that entire program works based on this clock source so just to begin with uh, for any controller one has to understand the io ports because most of the applications make use of the io ports so these io ports have multiple functions but just to begin with we are talking about the io ports which are meant for for simple input output operations so there are six io ports are there in msp430 microcontroller each is having eight input output lines so you can configure them either input or you can make them as a output but the most uh, unique feature of msp430 is port 1 and port 2 can be configured also as a interrupt request so they also generate a interrupt as and when there is a change of state on the particular pin is detected so that is a sensitivity of the pin can be programmable now you can see the uh, sfrs are the control registers of io ports of the microcontroller every port has these many registers as we have discussed earlier first is the function select register p select so this register again as you can see for every io line there is a corresponding bit d0 to d7 so these are all 8 bit registers so this register will decide the functionality of the pin whether it is a simple input output line or it is having the special function as specified by that particular port pin and then as you can see the in yellow color these registers these registers are meant for only for port 1 and port 2 not for uh, other ports so these are the three registers meant for interrupts so like interrupt edge select register interrupt enable register interrupt flag register so interrupt edge select register will decide the sensitivity of the pin on on what status on raising edge or falling edge or change of state on what status the pin should detect the interrupt is programmable with the help of ies register then interrupt enable register that means do you want to accept the interrupt do you want to generate the interrupt then accordingly you have to enable this register then interrupt flag register will set the flag whenever a corresponding interrupt is generated so this is meant for only for port 1 and port 2 of the microcontroller the other registers are which are there for all the ports that is a data direction register out register and in register dir register will decide the direction of the pin 
whether this pin is output or whether this pin is input so similarly out register so whatever you write in this register the, the data will be available on the pin similarly in register whatever is the data there on the pin is loaded into this register so that you can read the data from this register so for write operation we use out register for read operation we use in register for direction of the data we use the dir pin and this pin we are using as a input output or any special function is decided by the function select register in case of input output if you want to use the interrupts for port 1 and port 2 these three registers yellow colored registers are used for interrupt enable sensitivity of the pin and to read the status of the interrupt so most of the projects make use of the ports so just to begin with instead of talking about other peripherals of the MSP430 microcontroller we should concentrate only the clock source of the MSP430 microcontroller various modes of operation and the pins that is input output pins of the microcontroller so that how one can program the pins so once you understand at least these control registers of MSP430 as a, a clock source point of view as a input output point of view then one should start writing the programs first that is a programming environment either using some windows environment are using Linux environment and then you can use the tool set for writing a assembly language programs or C programs which can perform some arithmetic or logical operations or can make use of the input output lines then later on you can I mean based on your application you can you make use of other peripherals like timers ADC DAC and UART and DMA controllers and so on Let us look at the design of MSP430 microcontroller based system. MSP430168 is a 64 pin TQFP package. See the minimum system means as you can see pin number 1 pin number 64 are connected to 3.3 volts and pin number 63 and pin number 62 are connected to ground this is as far as the power supply to the board is concerned the external clock, clock source that is a crystal 8 megahertz crystal is the operating speed of this microcontroller which is connected on x2 in and x2 out that is pin number 52 and 53 which doesn't require any external capacitors the reset pin which is active low signal pin number 58 is connected to the ground by pull down register and this pin either you can connect a external switch or we have connected to the serial port so that while programming this pin can be reset so that with the help of the bootstrap loader we can reset the microcontroller for programming purpose so so as a minimum system connecting the reset pin connect to pull up resistor connecting the crystal connecting the VCC and ground is enough to make this microcontroller works since we need to program the microcontroller since it is a surface mounted device we cannot remove it from the target device so how to program this we have used signals as you can see what is called as a BSL RXT and BSL TXT so BSL RXT that is port 2.2 and BSL TXT which is port 1.1 these two signals are connected to the DC to DC converter that is max 3 to 4 3 
so these bsl txt bsl rxt and the reset r pin are good enough to program this microcontroller so there is a another pin called tck which is the which is meant for clock so these signals are connected to the max 3043 driver which will in turn output these available in rs232 form so input to this max 3243 is 3.3 volt signals from the microcontroller and output of this ic that is r1 side which is connected to the computer serial port that is 9 pin d type connector so this microcontroller also has another serial port that is txt and rxt as you can see txt0 and rxt0 which is a which is a usart and this serial port also we are connected to max 3243 driver so that this serial port when you connect it to the pc you can use it for downloading the program or you can use it for transferring the data from the mute c to the pc vice versa so to program the flash memory of the microcontroller you can use the computer serial port for programming purpose there is a jumper is provided here on bsl uh, connector as you can see the center pin that is pin number four and pin number three will decide whether the microcontrollers you want to connect the serial port or you want to connect the bsl port for example if you connect pin number four to six and pin number three to fax then you can program the flash memory of the microcontroller by using computers serial port and uh, using a appropriate bsl software if you connect pin number four to two and pin number one to three then you can actually transfer the data of uart zero that is the first serial port for data transfer not program transfer is a data transfer from the pc to that muc either by using hyper terminal or any other serial communication software so this is how computer serial port we are using for writing the program into the flash memory there is another way to program this microcontroller that is by using jtag ports but however jtag requires a additional hardware which can be connected there are jtag circuits are there which can be connected to the usb or parallel port and for programming purpose so for jtag programming you require the signals like tdi tdo tms and receive pins which are available on the jtag port as you can see tck tms tdi tdo which is a jtag port but in our case we are using computer serial port for programming so since the computer serial port is a rs232 standard you require this max 3243 ic which will convert this ttl signals into rs432 and vice versa as you can see there are four capacitors which are connected to this c1 c2 and v plus p minus which will generate the required voltages of plus 12 and minus 12 volts so that is the purpose of max 3243 which will convert signals or level shift the signals so that a 3.3 volts operated microcontroller can be connected to rs232 port of the pc so how the power supply is designed in this board this microcontroller is currently operating on 3.3 volts so but how to generate the 3.3 volts as you can see in the power supply design where you can use a either dc adapter or by using usb you can give the power to this then if you are using a dc adapter then you can mount this 7805 regulator which will convert input 9 volts into 5 volts or if you are using a directly 5 volts or through usb if you are giving the power then there is another regulator called lm triple one seven which will convert the input voltage into output of constant 3.3 volts so finally the microcontroller is operating on 3.3 volts that is this volts where the entire board is connected means like max 3243 is getting 3.3 volts and as you can see in the entire MUC only these pins pin number 1 and pin number 64 are getting the 3.3 volts and 
if you want USB to be connected for that, then there is a USB connector here on X2. So as we know, through USB, we give the five uh, USB is a five volts output of 500 milliampere. So this USB output is again, as you can see, directly connected to the regulator IC input of the regulator IC, where output it will convert this five volts into 3.3 volts. So either you can give power through USB or you can give power through DC adapter or a battery, but uh, output is generated from this LM triple one seven, which is a 3.3 volts regulated power supply. So that's all. That is about the minimum system design, where once you give the power 3.3 volts, and if you connect the computer serial port for loading the uh, flash memory program, and connect the BSL connector to pin number four and six and three and five. Short circuit these two pins. Four should be connected to six. Three should be connected to five. For programming purpose, programming the flash memory. But if you want data transfer, then only you connect two and four and one and three. That is how you can program it. See other connectors are say just for testing purpose. You have four LEDs which are connected to the port. So LED one, two, three, four th through three thirty ohms resistor as a common cathode are connected to. Microcontrollers port two, so port two point zero, two point one, two point three, and two point four. So these four ports of port two I/O lines are connected to four LEDs. So you can write a program to switch on or switch off the LEDs. Similarly, there is a power LED. So whenever you give the power to the board, then that is five volts through USB. Or maybe DC adapter. So this five volts power indicator is indicated by the P LED on the board, which is connected through 2.2 kilo ohms resistor. So five volts is also connected to the LCD connector because LCD is operating on five volts. LCD is a 16-pin connector. So pin number one is ground, two is VCC, three is connected to ground so that the contrast of the LCD can be adjusted by R5 resistor. Now pin number one is your control signal. RS read oblique write or enable of the LCD is connected to microcontrollers port 5.2, 5.1, and 5.0, and data bus of the LCD which is connected to port 4.0 to 4.7, which is a 8-bit data bus. So LCD is a text LCD, 16 by 2. LCD we have interfaced, but however you can also interface other 16 by 4 or 40 by 2 uh, such type of text LCDs. So in order to write a program for interfacing the LCD, or you must use port 5 and port 4 for sending the control signals and the data. So port 5 is for control signals, port 4 is for data. The a2T converter is available on port 6. So port 6.0 to 6.7 ADC is available which is provided on the connectors so that you can give analog inputs. But however remember that since the reference voltage of the ADC is 3.3 volts so in any case you cannot give more than 3.3 volts. So as you can see reference voltage of uh, ADC that is number 7 we have connected in 3.3 uh, 3 volts power supply. So if the power should be, be the input signal of the ADC that should not be exceeded more than 3.3 3 volts. The same port also having D to a converter. So as you can see the port 6.6 .6 and 6.7 is available on DS connector so that you can generate various analog output waveforms. The port pins are available on the connectors P1.5, 1.4, 1.3 so that you can give the inputs either through sensors or optocouplers for sensing the input signals to read the input signals. As we know port 1 and port 2 also has the interrupts so instead of sample uh, uh, reading the data by using pooling mechanism you can also use these signals of port 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 using interrupt mechanism. So since the MSP has two serial ports, 
second serial port we have not used on the board so rxt1 and txt1 which is free this is provided on the connectors five pin connectors so that you can interface at either bluetooth or the zigbee or 3.3 volts so you don't need the dc to dc converter it here for connecting the zigbee and bluetooth because the both the devices requires 3.3 volts so this rxt txt that is the other serial port of port 3.6 and 3.7 you can use it for uh, wireless communication and uh, txt and rxt0 that is the first serial port you can connect to the computer serial port for data transfer method so most important the signals i repeat first the power supply and the ground then reset pin which is pin number 58 and for programming purpose we have connected the max 3243 ic uh, through serial port we can program the flash memory port where whenever you are programming there is a bsl connector you need to connect 4 and 6 3 and 5 for flash programming purpose so the board side components placements as you can see through usb connector you can give the con connect it to the pc for giving the 5 volts power supply so then ic2 is a regulator ic which will generate 3.3 volts so or else if you want to use as a standalone system then 9 volts dc adapter or a battery you can connect it here so then this 7805 regulator will give 5 volts and this 5 volts is converted into 3.3 volts by using ic2 ic then microcontroller ic1 is as you can see is a tqfp package 64 pin msp430 controller and the q1 is the crystal 8 megahertz crystal where this microcontroller is operating to program this ic1 there is a ic4 max 3243 ic which is connected to the computer serial port that is x1 connector 9 pin d type female connector so if you connect the computer serial port to this then there is a bsl jumper is there so you will have to connect this you have to short circuit these pins that is 4 and 6 as as i said here that is 4 and 6 and 3 and 5 if you short it then that is this pin and this pin if you short it then computer programming software will program the flash memory for this controller then led is four leds are, are placed here on the outside the board 2.0 2.1 2.3 and 2.4 power led is here and then lcd as you can see what then is written as a lc1 what is uh, so pin number c1 of the lcd is here for means when you mount the lcd lcd should be inside the board if you have any jtag programming hardware then you can use this port for programming through jtag hardware otherwise you can use the computer serial port for programming purpose some io pins also provided that is pins 1.3 1.4 1.5 you by using jumper you can write a program to read the io lines of the microcontroller if you want to interface any zigbee or bluetooth so these connectors are there five pin connectors you can use it for interfacing purpose okay so this is about the hardware design or minimum system design of most of the msp430 controllers so you can use the software uh, uh, for either texas instruments or third party or linux environment to write the programs for this controller